شعت شموس الهدي بالكلمات فنارت الأفهام بالآيات أسرج بنور العلم عقلا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين واللعنة الدائمة على عدائهم أجمعين Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in his, the verse in the Holy Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, وَلَا تَتَمَنَّوْ مَا فَضَّلَ اللَّهُ بِهِ بَعْضَكُمْ عَلَى بَعْضٍ لِلْرِجَالِ نَصِيبٌ مِنْ مَكْتَسَبُ وَلِلْنِسَاءِ نَصِيبٌ مِنْ مَكْتَسَبٌ وَاسْأَلُوا اللَّهَ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this holy verse, Do not desire those in which Allah has given his gifts most freely on some of you than others. To men is allotted what they earn, and to women is allotted of what they earn. But ask Allah for his bounty, for Allah has full knowledge in all things. What we see in this world today, that there is everything that's favored. There is what's favored in the life of nature, what's favored in the life of animals, and what's favored in the life of a human being. In fact, every creation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created has been favored one over another. Even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran, in four verses he mentions, he says, وَنُفَضِّلُوا بَعْضَهَا عَلَىٰ بَعْضٍ فِي الْأُكُلِ if you realize fruits and vegetables, they look differently. They have different tastes. They have different, they come in different sizes. And they're, they even differ in their health benefits. The second verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَفَضَّلْنَاهُمْ عَلَىٰ كَثِيرًا مِّنْ خَلَقْنَاهُ تَفْضِيلًا We have preferred some over others, the human beings. In the third verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, speaking to the prophets, to the messengers, He says, وَفَضَّلْنَا بَعْضَ النَّبِيِّينَ عَلَىٰ بَعْضِ Some prophets exceed others in various ways. And in the last ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, تِلْكَ الرُّسُلِ Those messengers, فَضَّلْنَا بَعْضَهُمْ عَلَىٰ بَعْضِ Some are preferred more than others. Some exceed and are better than others. So you realize that in this world, whether we choose it or not, there is always the best, there is always the better. If you're pretty, there is what's prettier. If you're smart, there is what's smarter. If you're tall, there is who's taller. There is always the best, there is always perfect. And I think that the one that's most favored and preferred is what's linked to perfection. What's most perfect. Let me give you an example. For example, the inanimate. It tells you, why am I an inanimate? I want to be a plant. And let's just say that we can control this with a pen. So we bring all the inanimates and we cross them out with a pen. We make them into plants because plants are better than inanimates. But the plant says, why am I a plant? I want to be something more preferred. I want to be favored. I want to be an animal. So we bring a pen and we cross out all the plants. What do we have? Does this end? What do we have? We have a life with no oxygen, no rain, no rocks, no blocks, no water to drink if you're thirsty, and no oxygen to breathe from. You have animals. Let's see if this ends somewhere. The animal tells you, why am I an animal? I want to be preferred. I want to be what's better. I want to be a human. So you cross out the, hu the animals. You're left with a human being. Does this end over here? Of course not. The human being, the human being's body tells you, why am I feet? I want to be hands. So you cross out the feet and you're left with the hands. The hands tell you, I want to be preferred. The eyes are better than the hands. I want to be eyes. 
The eyes tell you, why are my eyes? I want to be preferred. I want to be a brain, the intellect. So what are you left with? You're left with a world with nothing but human brains pumping like this. Therefore, in this world, there's always who wants to be the best. But there has to be A and there has to be B. There has to be varieties in everything. So the first discussion is the existence of this phenomenon. The second discussion is the diagnosis of this phenomenon. Let's diagnose it. Say that you want to build a house. So what do you do? You need blocks. You pick up block A or block B. If you pick up block A to start first, block B will tell you, why didn't you lift me up? Why did you choose block A? Okay, let me give you another example. You're running from a tiger in a desert. And you run, run, you reach two paths. There's path A and path B. Which path would you, would you take? If you take path A, path B would say, why didn't you choose me first? If you choose path B, path A would say, why didn't you choose me first? So what do you do? You stop there and you let the tiger come and eat you. Or you're hungry. You pick up two pieces of bread to eat. Which piece would you start first to bite on? Bread A or bread B? Same thing. It will never end. We have to accept the fact that there is letter A and that there is letter B. Letter B cannot say, why am I not letter A? That's it. You're letter, you're letter B. A is A and B is B. There has to be varieties. The third discussion is why is there preference of this phenomenon. Whether we accept it or not, there always has to be preferences. It's available in this world. There's always the best, there's always better. Now this ayah, this verse that I mentioned is in Surah An-Nisa. And I am assuming it's in Surah An-Nisa because one of the problems that we have today in the West is about women. Why do men have more preference than women? Sometimes being equal is not justice. There has to be differences. It's just like telling the doctor that you have to be even and equal. So the doctor gives all his clients, his patients, one prescription. But that's not being equal. It's not being even because those patients, they differ in their illnesses. So why is the doctor giving them all one prescription because he wants to be equal, wants to be even. Or it's like a teacher giving all her students one mark, one grade. But there are students who have studied harder, students who deserve a high mark and stu students who don't. But the teacher says, I want to be equal. Sometimes being equal is not being justice. There has to be differences. If you accept the fact that the men and the women, there should be differences in their shape of their body and their feature faces, then you should accept that there should be differences in other things. Science today has proven that the size of a man's brain is a bit larger than the size of a woman's brain. If you accept that scientifically, then you should accept that in the Shia legislation, there are differences between men and women. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do not desire what Allah has given men over women or what Allah has given some to men and women. Don't desire. Desiring ruins your life. Number one, it's because you're objecting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why did Allah give us this and not give us that? Why do we have to go through this and not go through that? You're objecting Allah's creation. Don't desire. Some people, they ruin their lives by desiring. By just looking at what they don't have and not seeing what good they have. We don't have an update on the life of an ant, of a crawling ant. But scientists have pro proven or researchers have proven today that a crawling ant is living her life satisfied. She's fully satisfied with what Allah has given them. All the animals are, are satisfied with their life, except one creation, the human beings. 
they're never satisfied. They're always living their life miserable, depressed. Now, not all of them, but the majority of human beings, they live miserable, depressed, they have no energy. Why? It's because they look at what they have. Why does that person have this and I don't have this? Why does that person have that and I don't have that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this holy verse, do not desire what Allah has given men and women, one over another. Allah has given some to men and some to women. So don't desire, relax yourself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you everything, but there's one thing that Allah has, hasn't given you. You just think of that one thing. Why doesn't Allah give me this? Why don't I have this? This is the problem that we see in communities today. And I'm not saying everybody, but the majority. We see problems because there are people who have fame. There are people who are smarter. There are people who are prettier. There are people who are wealthier. And we look at what we don't have. So what do we do? We plot one another. We hate one another. We try to destroy one another. Why is that? It's because we desire of what others have and we don't. Allah says in this verse, do not desire. But it doesn't stop here. He says, ask Allah, wasalullah min fadlih. Don't desire, relax yourself. But ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of what you want. There's a story of this scholar. He's a well-known scholar, a Shaykh al-Bahbahani. If you search into his life, it's narrated that he was popular, he was a scholar, he was well known, and most of the mujtahideen were his students. He reached 80 years old and he lost his memory. Now, not all of his memory, but he felt that he lost his memory. So he gathered his students. Now, usually when someone becomes a senior, they get depressed because their body changes, their sense of hearing, their sight changes. They feel there's changes in their life. So they get depressed. Now, our youth are falling through depression. So how about our seniors? But this scholar did not get depressed. What he did was he gathered his students and he said to them that I have lost my memory. After reaching this fame, after 80 years old, he lost his memory. We show off a lot. In one second, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can take everything away from us. He can take our memory. What do we do? That's why there is in Ziyarah to say the Ma'suma in her Ziyarah. It says, Wala taslubni min ma anafi. Do not take away from me what good you have given me. Because in one minute, Allah can take everything away from you. That scholar gathered his students. He said to them that I have lost my memory. They said to him, what do we do? He said, Sayyid Mahdi Bahr al-Ulum lil iftaq wal marja'iyyah. You be the scholar. Sheikh Ja'far Kashf al ghata you will be the teacher. And Sayyid Abdullah Shubbar, you will be the person who will pray Imamat al-Jama'ah. Those were his three students his top students. They said, what would you do? He said, and I will teach the beginning of Hawza, the beginning of jurisprudence. Sharh al -lum'a. So he was 80 years old. He was the greatest scholar. He accepted himself to go down a bit lower and teach the beginners of Hawza. He did not close the door on his, himself. He did not get depressed. From 80 years of his age to 90 years, that's 10 years, he taught the beginners of Hawza and he passed away. This is how we're supposed to be, not desiring. Because once you desire, you ruin your life. You ruin your life by being depressed and just looking around yourself at what, what you don't have. If a sister, if a girl, her sister has a good husband, or a wealthy husband, but she's tested with a husband who's living in poverty. All she does say is, why does my sister have a good husband? He's wealthy and I don't. And all they do is look at what they don't have and what others have. Do you find a solution in this? 
run after the solution. There's no solution? Live happily, relax. Don't desire. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, says in this verse, don't desire. But it did not end here. He said, Allah min fadlih. You want something? Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you go to the book of Al-Burhan, there is this ayah and the translation of this verse that they asked Imam Al-Baqir alayhi salam that what does this verse mean? He said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do not desire what Allah has given some over others. So a woman and a man should not desire what Allah has given one over another, but to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have something similar, something like it. So if you see someone who's smart, don't sit down and desire and say, why is this person smart and I'm not? But ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَاسْأَلُوا اللَّهَ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ Ask Allah for His abundance. If you see someone who's wealthy, don't sit down and say, why am I living in poverty and this person is wealthy? That's desiring. Don't desire. But ask Allah, I want something like it. In another hadith, Al-Imam Salam Allah alayhi, he says that in this verse, in another narration, he said that in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given everyone certain blessing. And there are some blessings that he hasn't given to anybody except those who ask. Or he has given to some people, but for some he hasn't given to them. So those people have to ask. إن الله كان بكل شيء عليم. Ask Allah subhanahu wa taala for His bounty, for His abundance, and indeed Allah subhanahu wa taala will give you. So let's not ruin our life by desiring. Let's relax our bodies and brains, and ask Allah subhanahu wa taala for what we don't have, and Allah subhanahu wa taala indeed will respond to us. وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين. الله أعطى لك حد من الوجود لون من الوجود تفضل الله سبحانه وتعالى عليك بهذا الحد عرفت الحكمة في ذلك أو لم تعرف امشي في طريقك هذا التمني عمل مدمر ولا تتمنوا ما فضل الله به بعضكم على بعض